That should be starting now. And welcome, everybody. OK, so why don't we just go through introductions initially? And uh, I, I, I had put in the chat I mean, I'm sorry, I put in the agenda something very similar to what the Bicycle Advisory Committee does uh, for everybody to introduce themselves and at least share their experience attending a, a Walk Arlington event. And if you haven't attended a Walk Arlington event, to then maybe indicate what sort of uh, events you would like to attend in the future through Walk Arlington. So I will, I, I guess, uh, I will introduce myself and I'll start, but I'll, I'll give my my comments at the end. But uh, I'm Eric Goodman. I'm the acting uh, chair of the PAC. Um, uh, Lizzie has has stepped down or stepped down since the the the, the past the, the last meeting. So I'm acting at this point and hoping that we will soon have a a, a permanent chair. So thank you, Eric, for doing. It. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you're very so, um, but anyway, I guess I, I maybe I'll, I'll just start. So, in terms of uh, um, Walk Arlington, I have not attended a, a Walk Arlington event in quite a long time, um, and and I guess in part the couple of times that I have tried, I I I got waitlisted, <laughs> so I never made it on. So, uh, but the last time I did, I, I, um, I recall that there, there were some walks with uh, a historian uh, that uh, I guess like an architectural sort of historian that talked a lot about, uh, you know, aspects of Arlington and, and it, it was a very enjoyable walk um, starting. They've done, actually I've done two of them. One of them was around the courthouse area and the other one was along Columbia Pike. So. With that, I'll, I'll call on people. So uh, Anita, do you, do you want to go next? Sure. I'm Anita Walgren. <clears throat> I live in uh, Virginia Square. I'm not an official member of the uh, Pedestrian Advisory Committee, but I'm interested in pedestrian issues. I um, sold my car you know, 12 years ago and thought I would experiment with the car-free diet, and it's going pretty well. So um, I don't own a car. I rely on public transit and walking and um, have done a lot of Walk Arlington walks over the last 15 years. Most recently walked on uh, Fairfax Drive from Glebe to Clarendon, um, which was very useful and helpful. There was a component that was focused on Vision Zero, but also on just uh, the neighborhood. Well, that's great. Welcome. All right, uh, Pam. Hi, you can hear me. Uh, Pam Van Hine. I am the recording secretary for the PAC, and my first Walk Arlington event was in 2012, and I was one of four people in my neighborhood uh, to develop the walkabout for Aurora Highlands and uh, Arlington Ridge. And I've been doing Walk Arlington stuff ever since. I've, I've led led one, and I've participated a whole bunch. I've I've helped manage the crowd along, which sometimes is very exciting. They are wonderful events, and and as Mary would probably tell you, if you're waitlisted, just show up, and chances are you're going to get in. Because for any event that's free, there's always going to be no shows. Unfortunately, that's been no matter what it is. Uh, we have that with the Fear of Sackler. You have it with Walkabout. Uh, everything. Uh, people people say, yeah, they're going to come, and they just don't show. So show up. <laughs> What's the one Thanks. you led your favorite? What? Was oh. the walk that you led your favorite? Or oh, no. <laughs> Maybe not. I thought it was really good. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think my favorite was the recent one on, on the Black History on Columbia Pike. That was wonderful. <laughs> and and, and, and as I as I said at the back meeting, uh, we those of us who stayed with the tour as long as possible got caught in this wicked rainstorm, and yeah. this uh, this computer store guy uh, on Columbia Pike let us all shelter in his place, and he was so kind to let us stay there for like an hour because it was just torrential rain. That I mean, Columbia Pike was just a river. Uh, so when Brian's computer broke recently, we took uh, the computer to him and he fixed it for a nice guy. Good job. So, you know, it's right across nice. almost from giant. Go there. <laughs> All right. Very nice. So, David, have, uh, do you want to 
uh, introduce yourself and tell sure. us. Sure, I'm David Patton. I uh, am a county employee. I'm a transportation planner. I do mostly bicycle and pedestrian stuff. I do. I dabble in some other things as best my strong suit. I've been on quite a few Walk Arlington events. The last Walk Arlington event I actually did was a bike Arlington event at the county fair. And I was there for the electric bike day that uh, Mary and her colleagues hosted, which was uh, fun. I was, I'd was i never been to the county fair before. I thought that was a good reason to go. So I uh, got to see a lot of folks and it was a hot day and there was cotton candy and hot dogs and the whole business. Um, so, uh, and I've, I'm the official liaison to this group. So it's part of my job to be here and to keep you all in order. So uh, I, I will, we'll talk a little bit later about uh, something I've been working on behind the scenes that I hope has been, hope will uh, provide some extra value. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. Mary, do you want to? Introduce yourself, and then after you tell us a little bit about which event you 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 like, maybe you can uh, give a just a brief update on on Walk Arlington. Sure. Um, so my name is Mary Delau, and I'm responsible for bike and Walk Arlington. And I would say I have loved the walks we've done with the Black Heritage Museum because they're wonderful to work with and I've learned a lot, but my favorite walk is probably the pizza tasting walk that we did during our first National Walking Day weekend event. And we got sponsorship money and we just turned people loose in Boston. And we had a map and you could go to all these different pizza places and try pizza. And then you came back and scored them. And then we picked like the best pizza in Boston. And what was really like meaningful about this is that it was right after the pandemic had kind of settled and people were actually going out and doing things again and were not scared. So it was so like like full and then some had the longest waiting list ever. It was tons of different like families, couples, people by themselves, like and everybody just had so much fun and I had so much fun. Um, so that would be my favorite. Um, and so th the main thing going on with Walk Arlington right now um, is where I'm doing a lot of joint things like bike and walk. So we're doing Lighten Up Arlington in November. So that's the latest update that we'll be giving out lights, um, headlights and taillights for bikes, but you can also put them in your shoelaces or on your bag um, to be illuminated. So we will be in um, Roslyn, it'll be November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We'll be in Roslyn. We'll be on Columbia Pike at the WNOD, two spots we've always done. And then this year, we're also doing National Landing. And we'll be on the kind of on the Mount Vernon Trail by the Crystal City Connector. Um, and I see Matt is on the car, which is kind of handy um, from the bid, because I went to this spot we were thinking about having the uh, light giveaway in Crystal City. And I liked it, but I was thinking of a spot a little closer to that tunnel by the water park, which is still kind of in that general vicinity, but it's closer to the action. Um, so I'll be like seeking support from PAL volunteers to help with the outreach. Um, and so that's the main thing uh, coming up. I, I, that's a fun event, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then we have another volunteer interest event on October it's October 24th at Sherlington Library to recruit more pals. And we had done one at Central Library a couple months ago, and that was, we had a nice turnout for that. So I want to do one more in South Arlington and see if different people would come to that. Um, so that's about my update for now. Thank you. Thank you. So what, what ended up being the best pizza? That was my <laughs> among question. Those folks? It was really close, but it was between Boston Local and We the Pizza. And in the end, uh -huh. We the Pizza like pulled it off. Um, uh -huh. So that was really nice. And I think the owner is so nice. And I always go there now because he was so nice to us. But he was giving everybody like full slices and a free drink 
which was not required. They just had to give a little sample and we paid for all the pizza, but then a couple places donated it um, because the restaurants were so happy to have people in the door. So it was just yeah. like everybody was happy, but yes, we the pizza one. Um, all right. So whether it was because of the big slices and the drinks or because they were really the best, I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, since uh, Matt, I, I guess uh, Matthew jo Jones just joined us, uh, we're just going through introducing ourselves and also indicate. Oh, it looks like we have another person that came on. But uh, we're introducing ourselves and we're. Oh, uh, looks like Andrea. Was it Andrea that? Uh, oh, no, Anita. Well, uh, no, there was somebody else, I thought. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, we're introducing ourselves and talking about uh, Walk Arlington events. Uh, what was your favorite Walk Arlington event if you've attended one? And if you haven't, uh, what sort of event would you like in the future? So the floor is yours. Great. Hey, everyone. It's Matt Jones from National Landing Bid. Uh, I've met a lot, most of you, but if you're not familiar, I'm the planning and transportation manager with the bid. Um, I feel like we walk Arlington lately once a week at the bid. We have a lot of people who are coming down to see what's going on in National Landing, different organized groups. We give lead tours of the, our community. Um, I'm embarrassed, embarrassed to say I have not been to a Walk Arlington event, although the bid has supported many of the Walk Arlington events, which I'm really we're proud to say. Um, but I think one of the things that in my role, in my capacity, I think, and Mary knows this, like, you know, we always want to have more things going on in National Landing. Um, just let people know that it's not your father's Crystal City. Or your mother's Crystal City, <laughs> as a lot of people still think, you know, well, I'm just going to drive through, um, you know, how it used to be. But um, so, yeah, um, that's that's my story. All right. Well, thank you. Um, does anybody want to give public comment? We do have a space in the agenda for a short public comment. All right. With that, let's let's move on to the next item. And so this is a, a brief on the Crystal City to uh, DC Reagan uh, National Airport, uh, the, the connector. So uh, David, uh, if you want to um, maybe uh, start that and uh, and you and, and Pam, if, if you want to share um, what what you have on this, um, we have about 10 minutes to talk about sure. it. Sure. And uh, so Matthew might want to uh, step in too. This is a, a big deal for National Landing, Crystal City. Um, the main, I think the main part of the update is that the Crystal City, CC to DCA, we call it Crystal City to DCA, multimodal connector study. It's been a NEPA study for the last two years or so. It is concluding and the, the EA has been released. The public comment period has closed last week. There was a public hearing a couple of weeks ago, public meeting rather, a couple of weeks ago in Aurora Highlands. Um, and it's been a great project and shifting gears and turning, turning to what's called 30% design work now. Excuse me. So the county has engaged the same uh, consulting firm that's been helping us to date, VHB. They're based in DC and it's been a good group to work with. And they are doing the next phase, turning to design questions. It's been, I can tell that some members of the public have been a bit frustrated because the the NEPA EA stage that we've been in is quite abstract. It's looking for what possible impacts could happen that are unavoidable from a project like this, and how can you mitigate or moderate or avoid uh, any of those? Uh, and now we move, and and in the course of that, people ask all sorts of design questions. Well, what's it going to look like? How big? What color is it going to be? How big is it going to be? And and that's not the point of the environmental study. 
that's the point of the next phase, which is the design phase. So there'll be plenty of more um, opportunities to engage as the project moves forward in design. And also uh, a couple of couple of fact couple of aspects of the bridge uh, to be are as yet unsettled. Let me see if I can find a, a brief illustration. I think I think folks on this call pretty much know know this project, but um, let me see if Pam furnished a CC. Oh, she did. Pam, you're the best. Uh, the website for this. Oh, I have to take my. I have to take the screen. I'm sorry. Please do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the screen, and then I can share what I'm going to look at, and that is the website for the project. And uh, my county co colleague Kyle Kling is the uh, project manager for the county. So this is a good illustration to look at here, and it mainly because it shows some of the as yet unsettled parts of the project. So Crystal Drive on the west side of this uh, corridor and the airport on the east side. This is the airport uh, terminal, the metro station and parking garage. And WMATA, sorry, MWA, who manage the airport, uh, are very much of the opinion they don't want this bridge structure to touch their parking structure. Um, the original conception of the bike pedestrian connector bridge had it connecting to the parking lot with a very short connection to a walkway to get to the metro and to the airport. But now we're going to have to avoid the parking structure something like in this area and come around the end of the parking structure and connect somehow to the metro station. That's yet to be determined. So the airport has a roadway project, long range roadway development project, and we're ahead of them a little bit. So they don't have some of their elevations set. Uh, there's a, a potential uh, conflict point, if you will, here, and another one here, uh, closer to the west side of the bridge. And it's like playing 3D pickup sticks. Uh, there's, uh, there are alignments that are not yet set. So that's part of the gray area that's still to be determined about the project. Uh, map the study area, full size. Pretty sure folks on this call know this. Public process. I can, I can maybe I can maybe add a few comments. Oh, that'd just, be great. Just if you could bring up that original uh, bridge uh, picture that you had there. Um, just again, I I was in the bicycle advisory uh, meeting, and so there were a couple things I think that came up there. One, the where you see the the two alignments of the um, here and here uh, to the trail to uh, to yes. the uh, Mount Vernon Trail. Um, I believe those are two options. I think the the straighter one may be the one that they had uh, felt might be the better, but those are two different options. Looking at that yep. on the uh, Crystal City side, where the VRE station will be. Um, there, there were some questions about elevators and stairs and how to get bicycles from one elevation to another. So there's still a lot, I believe, that has to be worked out on on that end. Yes, I, I and, believe. And and you you must be aware that that's a different project. That's the VRE station <laughs> project, for Virginia Railway right. Express. Right. So that so, uh, would would be incorporated into that process. Yes. It looks like. And then on the other end, I believe, as you said, the uh, undetermined part, there was uh, some, I think, some concerns about bringing people into a garage where there are cars and, and trying to sort of parade them or get them through the garage. So I believe that was 
part of the issue why they were talking about going around the end of the garage. There may also be some structural items too. I, I don't know that uh, that that was discussed, but I believe um, they they did say they would like to connect to that uh, to the connector that goes from the garage over to the metro. Um, and then there were some questions also about how it would connect. So those are all, I guess, unknowns. There is also some some thoughts about whether or not there would be a covering over all or part of it. And so that again is is something that's probably too early in the design. So right. those are from memory, some of the things that came up in the bicycle advisory committee. You're, you're uh, correct on all of those. Okay. Yep. One of the distinctions between these two uh, connect connectors between the connector and the Mount Vernon Trail, this this one on the west side is mostly on National Park Service property. This one is mostly on airport property. So that's uh, who wants to play ball. And yes, there were concerns about directing uh, bridge users through an active parking garage. But there's also the issue that the airport doesn't want to sacrifice any parking. <laughs> they, they, they are building an entire new building of parking. And yet they're very um, possessive of what they have. So they didn't want to lose any uh, parking, like say five or six parking spaces. They don't want to lose that in order to accommodate uh, bridge users. So that was also part of the mix. So still to be determined, the exact um, alignment, the touch points, but the uh, environmental review is essentially complete, just waiting for the final ruling from a couple of federal agencies who have to sign off on that. Okay, uh, I'll say a couple words about it. Sure. And uh, thank you, both of you, for your comments. And this is one of my favorite projects. Uh, everybody in our community just can't wait for this because then we can right. easily walk to the airport and do it safely. Uh, it is, and, and bike as well. So we are so excited about this project. And it's a wonderful project, except uh, at both ends and in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, there's a lot of issues with the VRE station that still needs to be worked out. We're waiting to even see what the actual VRE design is. And uh, apparently on October 20th, the VRE people are going to present to their board what their current plans are. And you know, the this bridge has to go over the over the railroad tracks, over the VRE station, and then go down to the street level. And it's a lot of negotiation and, uh, to get there. And the exact design is definitely TBD. And it's not it's not this project, as David said, is designing it. This is a VRE part. And JBG Smith is critically a part of it too. And at the airport end, uh, we were very surprised about the DCA plans uh, that they recently had to build all these new buildings and more parking and redo the streets and do this flyover street. And that has impacted the design of, of CC to DCA, how it lands at the airport. And uh, everyone is trying to work closely together to make this work. We assume it will be figured out, but it's tricky. Uh, the it, we will definitely have a connection with the Mount Vernon Trail. Uh, my sense is that they were aiming towards the, the T intersection as opposed to a roundabout. There isn't really room for a roundabout. It takes up too much land. Uh, and the land here is precious and historical. You don't want to mess with it. Um, so I guess that's the, the faint blue one that could, comes down kind of uh, as a direct impact maybe. The, the other issue is the actual design of the bridge, especially over the uh, GW Parkway. And those of us in the community and the National Landing Bid and others would like a really beautiful bridge. And the National Park Service is looking for something more simplistic, shall we say. So that is still a, an issue that's going on. Uh, we, we, we think that this is a brilliant idea and it's, uh, it's so exciting. It can be a real destination as well as a great way for cyclists and pedestrians to get to the airport and to our community. And you know, you'd be dropped right off on Crystal Drive. There's, there's hotels there, there's everything you want, the new water parks there. It's great. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Um, I guess two things. First, uh, Eric uh, Malpelli has joined us. Uh, I don't know, uh, Eric, if you want to just give a brief introduction uh, for yourself. Hi, sure. Uh, Eric Malpelli, um, Old Dominion Civic Association. Here, solo, solo parenting. <laughs> wants to watch a second act. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Eric. Yes. Thank you. Solo, solo Thank parent you. of a chocoholic. Yes, so he had an Oreo for dinner. Um, <laughs> things are going great here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thanks for joining. Thank you. Good to see and, you. Um, and Matthew, I, I wonder if you wanted to say anything as well before we move on to the next topic if you want to say anything about the the uh crystal city to to dca um uh project sure pam said said oh I, it's not much stuff to say um I, we at the bit are really excited for the project i know rob mandel our deputy director has been very integral to the ideation of it and you know every step of the way um yeah i think the challenge is that it's three projects in one i think pam did you say that or was david said that some of someone mentioned that so what we do we have the station and we have the the, the um the the actual uh, pedestrian bike bridge then we also have the long bridge which is coming later and they all work in concert in a way and so this is just you know the, it's gone for the first piece of this <laughs> very expensive puzzle um so uh yeah why don't you stay tuned for the design phase and that's where people are really going to be tuned into because of like uh, pam said we want a beautifully designed bridge other stakeholders want something very utilitarian so we shall see how this shakes out but we're have our fingers crossed we're advocating we're writing letters um for um you know something um something a beautifully designed bridge so stay tuned Thank you. Appreciate uh, the the additional comments. Uh, let's move on. We're running just a couple minutes behind, but not too bad. Uh, David, if you want to talk about the Mount Vernon Trail and the GW Memorial Parkway uh, South environmental impact um, effort for the Park Service. OK, I am again going to rely on Pam's cheat sheet that she sent a little while ago because it has the actual EA loaded up on it. So I'm going to take the screen again. Very good. And you all should be able to see that. So um, this, is, this is a very big deal. I confess that I don't know much about the roadway portion of this, which is the south section of GW Parkway, south of Arlington. Uh, but the Mount Vernon Trail section is the entire Mount Vernon Trail, minus the bit through uh, downtown Old Town Alexandria. I know quite a bit about this. I've been talking with the Park Service planners and designers for several years. And the Mount Vernon Trail, is the most popular trail facility that's in Arlington, uh, even though it's not ours. It's a, uh, decidedly a part of our non-motorized transportation network. We, we interact with the Park Service regularly about the Vernon Trail and other facilities. And they came to us a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, with plans to rehabilitate the Mount Vernon Trail. The Mount Vernon Trail gets nearly a million users a year, probably more like 850,000. And it was those numbers are skewed during pandemic, but it's a lot. And regularly sees four or 5,000 people a day on nice weekends in particular. Families, speedsters, dogs, baby carriages, the whole shebang. And in many places, the trail's only nine feet wide which used to be a National Park Service standard, but uh, they've come to the realization they need to widen the trail. And widen the trail, rehabilitate bridges, which are timber bridges, 
over water courses that need to be uh, protected from chemicals, say. So no harsh salt chemicals on wood bridges that then fall into the river and lots of groundwater issues. Plenty of places along the trail that are low, low lying. Um, and then everyone knows we get heavy rains around here. So there's a lot of stormwater considerations. So the Park Service came to us a few years ago and said, well, we've been doing a lot of design work for trail improvements, but we, we don't have a way to pay for this. So Arlington County helped the National Park Service gain access to Commonwealth of Virginia transportation funding to do a major project. I think the final number was about $28 million. So we used some of our chips. We used some of the county's goodwill, if you will, to uh, make the case that this was a, a, via, a valid, viable, and important use of state funding, and it was approved. So now uh, the trail portion of this EA uh, and the road portion are out for public review. You can see there's a clock ticking. So they're very, <laughs> they're very clean on keen on uh, announcing that there are exactly 13 days and six hours and 20 minutes uh, until the public comment period on this um, EA closes. I have not read the whole thing. Um, if there's a, if there are questions, I can probably help people. Uh, to de more details about the trail portions, I know there are uh, a lot of traffic considerations in places they're narrowing the narrowing the roadway, which seems to me like quite a big deal. Uh, in places the park in places where the parkway is four lanes, it carries as much vehicle traffic as an interstate highway, 60,000, 80,000 cars per day. And there are uh, efforts in here, again, I haven't read them uh, fully, to narrow, to calm the speeds. There are plenty of uh, conflict uh, zones that they're trying to design away. And uh, so if people uh, want to read and comment, the county is uh, collecting comments <clears throat> internally. Uh, to make it within this October 24th deadline. But it, there's also a public comment facility. And uh, I was one to find that comment now. You comment yes. now, there you go. So uh, we will put this uh, announcement in the record of the meeting. So anybody can, can find this document, read it all 180 pages or however long it is. <laughs> and uh, comment and submit. There we go. So um, for those of us, I guess, who are looking really at the impact uh, with regard to Arlington and the trail, which is, right. is I guess, most relevant to this. Right. Um, other than widening, are there, from what you've looked at, are there other things that uh, you might want to point us to or point out? Uh, Sure, I will take a step. So widening and stormwater management. So in places, for example, uh, in the section of the Mount Vernon Trail, north of Memorial Bridge, between Memorial Bridge and Roosevelt Bridge, say, uh, it's, it's quite low lying and it frequently floods. And there's um, some real realignment that is in uh, in store there. So uh, let's see if we can find some illustrations. Let's see. Uh, Vernon Trail Corridor Study, Mitigation Measures, ah, Figures, Figures. I don't know the zones. Let's see if these just flip on. Ah, here we go. So here's their orientation map. And the Arlington portions are zone three, three, zone. but also two. No, no. Uh, 
So three is Arlington. I think the northern section has already uh, gone through this process. Sorry for being behind the behind the eight ball here, uh, behind the curve rather. I think that the work that the Park Service is doing on the northern section of the parkway was probably like this, also connected to work on the northern section of the trail. And the parkway work is underway, but the trail work is not yet underway. And so what I've been uh, consulted on are things like points of access and detours and where can construction be staged. And that's not going to be part of this uh, plan. But so here this there's is Mount Vernon. I'm sorry, this is from uh, it looks like the Memorial Bridge to National Airport pretty much, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So that's this zone three. And four mile run, the stream here is essentially the the boundary between Arlington and Alexandria. But they are also planning work, major work. Oh no, I lied. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I should I need to adjust my glasses. So this zone three is the trail all the way to TR Island, the TR Island parking lot, which is under my cursor here. So this is what interests Arlington specific people. Although a lot of us uh, travel the whole trail and uh, we sure. want to give comments on the entire thing. Sure. Uh, a couple comments. Uh, a lot of the just this came up at back a little bit and there was a big discussion about what's happening at Gravelly Point, and that is something to pay attention to. Uh, it is one of the most congested places in on the trail, and because you have people watching airplanes, people t t teaching their kids how to ride their tricycle, uh, people picnicking, people running, people walking, people biking, people racing through there, and it's a major uh, problem and people run into each other there. And I think Elwin said that there are plans in there uh, to do kind of a, a bypass around part of the trail so that the people that are just trying to move through can actually uh, do that without being in conflict with the people that are just kind of meandering around on the trail, which would be terrific. But there, there's question, we need to pay attention to that and so shall we look in the EA and see if they detail that out? Oops. What's happened? Yeah. Are we there? Something happened. I lost lost connection. Oh. Um, Tom Corns joined us and then my screen went blank. Okay. <laughs> Um, Tom has powers we were unaware of. Um, if you uh, don't we mind, see let's your, we see let's your open. screen. We see okay. your screen though right now. So, so let's uh, open up the uh, EA and see what they okay. say about Gravelly Point. Okay. Very good. So that's oh, I already have it open. Doug on it. It's section one. We know now. Order study. So starting at page 19, 19 to 29. Those actions, roadway modifications, median, road diet section, graphic markings. This, this illustration trail. shows. This illustration shows two ways of widening the trail, widening it symmetrically from what exists and then widening it to favor one side over the other where there's something in the way that prevent, prevent uh, 
Oh, here's Pam. Pam got kicked out. I, I think it got disconnected. I have no idea how. <laughs> well, I did too, Pam. When Tom Corns joined us, uh, my oh. screen went blank. Oh, well, well, we're very glad Tom's here. Good to have enough people to vote if we can count uh, Jim and, and Andrea's comments. Okay. That's, the, that's the critical thing that we have to vote on today. The legislative priority. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tom, for coming. Thank you, right. Eric, for coming. And Here finally is a is a paragraph about Gravelly Point. Construct ah. permanent restroom facility near the boat ramp. This is one of those, uh, as Matthew was saying, one of the places where these projects come together. It's very likely that Arlington County will make a contribution to the park service that will be used to build a comfort station at Gravelly Point. Hmm. Ba -ba -ba, those improvements allow the permanent facility. Create a gentler, gentler curve east of the existing Port of Johns and separate pedestrians. So east of the uh, temporary uh, restrooms. Intersection safety improvements for the sidewalk crossing the trail. So they're not saying a lot about that. I don't think there's designs yet for that uh, intersection. But as, as Pam said, they want to detour trail users around the uh, conflict point at the restrooms. Oh, was I was I cut off when I was talking about uh, David Goodman's uh, suggestion? Yes, you were. We, we, okay. didn't, hear we didn't hear you. Hear we didn't hear you say that, okay. David. Yeah, he posted something uh, to both the pack and the back uh, listeners, uh, recommending a, a that we all send comments, but b he recommended a specific width from some guideline that he knew about, and it was something like sixteen feet wide. Do you remember that? On the and trail or the on the, the trail on the trail. That's that's considerably wider than most places in most locations. But it was that yeah. just in 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 that congested area. No, I think he was talking about the trail in general. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it it was he posted it uh, a few weeks ago. It, it's on our Google group somewhere. I can look for it. Uh, you haven't heard anything about uh, any new guideline that would. Uh, be much wider than the 10 feet they're proposing. I have not. Even even 14 feet. I have not. Yeah, we, we would all love as wide as possible because I, I use a trail all the time and yes, it's very congested and I've, I've almost stopped going around the Grav Gravelly Point area during COVID just because it was a zoo all the time. I would I would come back another way. <laughs> I learned to love Boundary Channel instead. But yeah, it's a really important project, and for all of us who who do use it, uh, who want to use it, please send comments. And if if you drive on it at all, uh, send your comments on that too. They've they've already implemented some of the stuff uh, south of Alexandria, and I think it's controversial. And some works, and some doesn't work. They put up lots of bollards, and they have done some. Um, street narrowing, uh, lane narrowing, and things, eliminating lanes and. I'm not sure that drivers have figured it out. I'm not sure that pedestrians and cyclists have figured it out either. It's complicated, but it's important. All right. Well, does anybody else, uh, I guess, before we move on to the next topic, does is there anybody else that wants to comment or add add anything? All right. Well. Let's let's move on to the next one just to kind of stay on track with the agenda, uh, though I'm not sure we're going to be able to do some of our business items. But let's uh, Pam, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, legislative, uh, the legislative priorities letter. And I don't know if uh, if you can. Can you uh, display that? I think Pam, you just have to. If you have it available, you can just uh, take hit the share button. The screen, hit the share button, and you can show your screen. If she can't, I can. I can look and see if I can pull it up. Or I have it. I have it. I could just put it up. I attached it, David. So if you can pull yes, it. Yes, I'll. Sorry. I'll pull it up. How about that? So I'm gonna uh, take I'll the talk about again. it though. Okay, and do we know what it is, Tom? 
Uh, doesn't look like Tom has rejoined us. I think no. I can actually pull it up, if David. If no, I've got it. Okay, got you got it. it. All right, great. Tom is waiting in the lobby. Okay, let him All in. Right, yes, let him in, did. please. I just did. Tom, welcome back. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> okay, can this be bigger at, at all? Uh, yes. Okay, people might have a hard time reading it. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is the final draft letter that Eric and Cynthia and I prepared uh, as a joint backpack letter with our legislative priorities for the 1924 session. Uh, 2024. No, 2024. Short for great grief. <laughs> Wish, oh, okay. All right. Uh, the, so we were told we could do up to five different proposals if we were doing it together. And did we end up with five or did we end up with six? One, two, three, four, five. Primary. Five. Yeah, primary, we have five. Okay. Five and, plus four. Right. And Alina, Alina suggested that we prepare two different groups depending upon the outcome of the election because, as everyone knows, uh, every single House seat is up for election uh, in November and there's been a lot of redistricting and we're not sure how it's all going to come out and we hope everybody votes. Uh, so we think that our primary ones have a pretty good chance no matter what happens and the secondary ones are not are going to be more dependent on the outcome, as it were. So uh, all of the five, or actually four of the five points we discussed at the backpack meeting in September, and there was consensus that they were good. We also discussed the secondary ones and thought they were good. The one that we added, which uh, I, some, I don't know, if David, you told me that it was really important, or somebody told me it was really important, is that we need to support WMATA and Metro, because if that isn't fixed, we're all in really bad trouble. All of us. I, I want to salute you doing that, because I was told that uh, by one of my colleagues, one of my regional planning colleagues, saying no matter what any other interest group in the county uh, suggests as a priority, this will be the county's biggest priority. Yeah, so by, true. by by making it your leading suggestion, you're supporting county leadership in, in their strategy. So thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> but it is really important to us. Yes. I mean, those of us who are basically car free, which is a lot of us, uh, we we need Metro and the bus system as to help us get around, especially if you're primarily a pedestrian and not a cyclist. Uh, it's really hard to get do more than a few miles without taking Metro or a bus. So absolutely, we support it. So yes, that's our number one issue right now. Uh, so yeah, we put that in there. And the second one is allowing a cyclist to cross streets uh, at all pedestrian signals, including the leading pedestrian intervals. Uh, there is, a, there was legislation put in by uh, Senator Favola. Uh, it died in the House and it didn't specifically talk about LPIs. And we specifically want to make sure that LPIs are in there as well. And we think that this is a safety issue uh, for pedestrians as well as cyclists. Uh, it's really hard for cyclists to get up and going if they have to stop and if they have to compete with cars uh, when they are allowed to start. And it's better if they go with us. Uh, Andrea did have one issue about this and I reassured her that this is not really a problem. Uh, she thought that this meant that they would be in the crosswalk with us. And I said, no. <laughs> Uh, it depends unless on they're the walking their bike. <laughs> unless, that's what I said, unless they're walking their bike, uh, you, you would be with traffic. And ideally, you would be in your own little green bike crosswalk. And in, increasingly, there's more of those. But no, routinely, you are not going to be riding in the crosswalk with that. So she's, OK, fine, that's great. OK. Can so, I uh, just add to that? I mean, so, please. so basically, the leading pedestrian interval for a cyclist um, allows the cyclist to kind of get out a little bit ahead of the confusion, you know, instead of being kind of buried within 
within the traffic there. Um, and so when it enters the intersection, there's better better visibility for, for the cyclists. It gives them uh, usually, I think the leading pedestrian intervals are typically about five seconds, something like that. And so uh, that it, it, it just adds to kind of safety and visibility of, of the cyclist. So. As it does for pedestrians as well. Yes. So yes. hopefully we are visible and at least partly in the intersection before we get hit. So it's a good thing. Uh, then we have a general statement on funding Vision Zero Transportation Safety, which has been in there before and doing it. Uh, I mean, this is a standard thing that the county has put in that we've put in before, and I'm not sure it's ever been specifically made into any kind of law, but. And of course, part of it is uh, granting local authorities uh, to implement key vision zero projects such as automated enforcement and then we talk about that more below and then we have uh, allowing uh, bicyclists to ride side by side which is again safer for cyclists uh, safer for families and anything that we can do to help cyclists be more safe will encourage them to be on the road and stay off the sidewalk so that's better for pedestrians uh, and then uh, allowing safety stops for bicyclists. This was controversial when we discussed it at the backpack meeting, but since then Cynthia did a lot of research and found out that it's actually a really good thing to do and the chances of it succeeding uh, I've, this year are pretty good. It almost made it through this year, so we hope it'll go through next year. And again, it's just it's much safer for cyclists to yield rather than have to stop because it's so hard to get going again. And I mean, we're not talking about red lights, we're talking about stop signs. And to be able to treat them as yield and going through cautiously is, is a great idea. OK, any questions about any of those? And Eric, is there anything else you want to add about any of those? Well, it says actually it has two things. Uh, it says to treat uh, uh, actually a red light as a stop sign. So that means mm -hmm. like a stop okay. sign, you would you would pause or not, not pause. You would stop. You would kind of survey the area. And if there is no oncoming traffic, you would go. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to come to a complete stop at a at a at a stoplight and the other one is at a stop sign you would treat that as a as a yield sign that's that's what okay. the safety stop at least as as you've written up here indicates okay that makes sense all right uh any questions so i have a question yeah. i did just for my own understanding i always thought you could ride to a breast that is not legal I know it is in many states. Is it not legal in Virginia or is it not legal in Arlington? I would assume it's not legal in Virginia, but I really don't know. It must be an issue. <laughs> I'm just surprised by that. I think there's a lot of things that aren't really legal in Virginia, but people do it anyway. Okay, well, that's... And it becomes an issue. I mean, if it's not assuming that it's not legal and if you get hit. It becomes a problem. Uh, suing for negligence. Because you are doing something technically illegal. Which is in our secondary priorities, right? <laughs> All right, well, that's good to know. <laughs> Thanks. I here it here it yeah. is right here. I called it up on uh, bike law. Bicycle oh, this says not more than two. Not side more than by two side. side by side, less than bike paths. But it's not looking at that too, David. But then there's some other link. It's like you don't know how legitimate different links are. Some hmm. other one, bikelaw.com says, on a laned roadway, bicyclists riding two abreast must ride in a single lane. But like, I don't know what this website is. Someone, I have no doubt if the BAC came up with this, that they would know. Uh, 
Yeah, this so, is Jill, Jillian's thing, and I'm I'm sure she knows what she's talking about. Right, she knows her stuff, so that was just yeah. surprising yeah. to me and disappointing. So, but yeah. Anyway, we'll I don't, carry on. Okay. Thank All you. right. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then our, our our always high priority, but we're listing it as a secondary priority, depending upon what happens with the election. Uh, removing contributory negligence law in Virginia. And as I just mentioned, if you're not 100% in the right, you uh, are in the wrong and you have a, you can't get your damages. So, and this is true for pedestrian, this is true for cyclists, and this is something that we really want to change. And I believe there's like five, five states in the nation that, uh, yeah. that uh, have this law, but, uh, but the other, 45 states do not yeah yeah and and I, I was looking reading up on it it's really complicated how it should be done but i think we'll, we'll just leave it general that we want it changed <laughs> all right and this the next one uh is side underride guards on trucks statewide um these protect cyclists and pedestrians and and drivers uh from rolling under trucks from being when they're pulled hit, under. But pulled under uh, and killed. So this would be like a real duh. Yeah, of course we want this. And apparently there's pushback on this in some rural areas in Virginia, but it would be a nice thing to have. So if, if we have the chance, we want to push for it. So. Okay, and then we go down to, and again, that's a, a bike pad issue, definitely. And then uh, enabling uh, municipalities to have e-bike rebate programs or introduce e-bike rebate statewide program. Uh, a lot of us feel that the way to encourage more biking, which we would all like to do, is uh, encourage e-bike use because uh, it's easier when you are, especially if you are older and frail, uh, to get on a bike and will actually go. You don't have to have super muscles to go up hills and things. And but they're expensive, and this would be a way for people who can't afford it. You can spend thousands of dollars on e-bikes, which is crazy. Uh, this would be a way for people to make them more affordable, and we hopefully would encourage use. And then finally, and we, rolling out their program. I was going to say, sorry, yeah. I was going to say DC is rolling out yeah. the program very soon, right. so it'd be kind yeah. of comparable for the. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, and we mentioned DC. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Matt. And then finally, we have provide broader authority to local cities and counties for automated traffic enforcement, see Vision Zero above. And then specifically, we mentioned speed and red light cameras, grant local authority to expand the implementation of automated traffic enforcement beyond the already approved school and work zones. And this is important. Automated ticket enforcement has the potential to improve safety, reduce unnecessary interactions between residents and police, and further advance confidence in equitable outcomes by reducing or eliminating the possibility of race-based disparities in speed and red light enforcement. And of course, this is an important issue for cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, we all get almost clobbered by speeding and red light running drivers all the time. So we would like to have this enforcement. So this is our draft letter. Uh, we would like to send it out tomorrow. <laughs> it is due on Friday. Uh, so is there any further discussion about it? Any clarification or can we take a vote? And we have uh, two absentee votes for it already, which is important. Two, yes, two that have two. already expressed uh, their um, approval yeah. of it. Right, and they were not able to attend. So, uh, any any further discussion about this? Yes, no. Okay. Uh, anyone voting against the letter? No. Uh, anyone voting for the letter? Yes. Okay. So I, I guess everybody. I, I don't know. How do we want to? Yeah, we'll do the thumbs up. That's a good one. Yeah, here. So one, two, three. Ah. I don't know if people want to. <laughs> Aye. 
So that's four. Uh, and then we thought. have two. Well, then we have okay. two absentees. So I right. guess that would we, give we us six. That'll... And we, we, we got we it. will bid it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Thank you, everyone. I, I, will, I will send the Cynthia message after the meeting and she will send it out tomorrow. Thank you so much. Uh, that was that was good. And thank you, Tom and Eric, for showing up. Mm. <laughs> and for Eric and or for Andrea and Jim for voting in abstentia. Very mm. important. Was, this was the most. This was the one thing we really had to do tonight. So thank you. Okay, Eric, back to you. All right. All right. So let's move on in the agenda. The next thing uh, is really on Vision Zero and, and safety issues. Um, I don't have a lot to add currently about Vision Zero other than uh, there is, uh, I guess, the annual Vision Zero stakeholders uh, meeting is coming up on October 19th. So, so next week. Um, and I'm the alternate. I'm not sure. Uh, if Eric Goldstein is going to be attending, I need to check in with him. Uh, if he doesn't, I, I will certainly attend. I, in fact, I will attend, but I think he would be the official um, person voting or speaking person there. So um, I think what 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 will come out, whatever comes out of this, I will I will disseminate it to uh, to our group. Uh, but I don't have any. Any other updates at this point? I don't know if either Pam or David, if you have any um, any anything that uh, has come out of Vision Zero uh, to mention in the last uh, last month or so. Uh, not Vision Zero specifically, but the, the the third bullet there, the stop for pedestrians law. That came into effect, I believe, July 1 this year. It was something that many people across the state uh, advocated for for a long time. And so I put the question to Christine Baker and Dan Neighbors. What, I hear an echo. Is that somebody? Yes, somebody has an open microphone. It may be Tom uh, or Pam. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was Pam. She just muted herself. Uh, anyway. Um, so I got a brief message back from Christine and Dan. They're they're rolling out the signs. So I haven't seen the signs yet, but everywhere that there would have been a yield to pedestrian signs, there should now be a stop for pedestrian sign. And the further question was, what are the police doing? Are they stepping up enforcement? Uh, Probably not. They're not adding any new enforcement, but the officers will be on the lookout for violations of this new law. And signs so far, but not pavement markings so far. Dan's looking, Dan neighbors are looking for a budget to do a more vigorous uh, effort. Uh, but it seems like kind of a soft launch, if you will. Uh, people are aware of it. There's going to be um efforts being made but i don't i would not expect a lot of fanfare about this oh and oh oh and and the second part of that question here how to report areas that people feel uh are hot spots or need um need attention drawn to them and i got a couple of links so i should probably put them in the chat of this meeting one is uh, to our transportation engineers. The other is to the police. So uh, while I'm not off camera, I'm going to find that message. I'll put the links into the into the chat. Thank you, David. I'll be I'll be right back. And there's a there's a apparently a, a one pager. So uh, I have a, a one pager that Christine developed. I will share that out with the group. I don't think I can do it on the on the chat. Maybe I can. No, I don't see how to do that on the chat. Um, so I will send that out to the group separately, 
but these uh, reporting links I want to put into the chat. Oh, and um, Dan Neighbors said he's happy to come to Dan. Folks know who Dan Neighbors is, right? He's the he's the new head of TE and O, bureau chief. Great guy. He's been with the county for probably eight or ten years now. Uh, he said he's willing to come to the PAC next month. I think we should take him up on that. Have him come. That would be good. Yeah, he was the he was a long, long time ago. He was the chair of the PAC. <laughs> really? I didn't know really? that. <laughs> wow. That's funny. <laughs> really? I think I think he was at one time. I did talk that. about that too. But, but before my time, may, maybe Tom can. Oh my say, God. I, I didn't I didn't know was. there was a before your time. <laughs> yeah, I don't recall. Huh. All right. I'm putting a link in the chat that is ongoing transportation complaint. Or maybe maybe he was the liaison that could have been it uh, before David, the, the other David. I don't, Eric, I would be surprised. Dan, I don't know how long, Dan lives in Arlington now. I don't know how long he's lived in Arlington. But he's had quite a career. He was a Fed for a while. He worked for USD or FHWA. Then he was in the private sector. He worked for one of the big consulting firms. Uh, and then he, but I mean, he's, he's a safety expert. He's done things like develop the safety audit program that the Feds use to do safety audits. And now he's Arlington. So we're fortunate to have him. So anyway, I put that link in there. I will send that and the one pager about the uh, the uh, the new stop from pedestrian law. I'll send that out to the group. Thank you, David. And then, so I'm sorry, under this same uh, agenda item, Pam, do you want to talk about the Dana Bress? Uh, effort uh just very briefly and again well, i sent a link to it and i and i had shared the document uh he he was somewhat apologetic uh he had he had planned to take everybody's latest comments and uh put give us a new draft by the end of september before he left town and he ran out of time so uh you have all been sent the mid-September version. Uh, there is absolutely no rush on this. Uh, it's a very long document. You're all welcome to read it. And if you have comments, uh, I encourage you to send them to Dana uh, when he comes back from his wonderful African trip. Uh, mm -hmm. He will work on this again. <laughs> he did send me wonderful pictures of wildlife. I said, that's nice, but it's not the MOT. <laughs> Uh, there, so they're having a fabulous time. I I put it up on the screen. Uh, just a, I, I just a couple comments that I have. Uh, just uh, and again, I think he's working on a, he's working on updating this. I think it's very comprehensive. I think it goes into kind of all aspects of the MOT process. Um, some of it is a little repetitive. Um, it, uh, it, he talks several times about, in many cases, about uh, setting up procedures, or if there aren't if there aren't procedures to to create procedures. So, in some ways, maybe stepping a little bit, he's he's sort of providing quite a bit of guidance to the county, uh, maybe beyond what the county might be capable of doing. Um, so I, I I like that he's really taken a comprehensive look. I would like to see it streamlined a little bit more, a little more focused. And um, also one of the things I guess I'd like to see, and and David, I don't know if 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 we can if 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 this can be shared with us. Do we have uh, the policy or procedures uh, for MOTs? Is that is that public? 
Is that a public document that, that can be shared? Eric, that's a great question. I don't think there is a single document or a single uh, coherent policy. And this group, the pedestrian group and the bicycle group and others have all been trying to crack this nut for a long time. And I know that you, Eric Goodman in particular, uh, are, have been great about, you know, calling in when you see things that are not right on construction sites. And it always seems like the public is chasing the tail of this process. And this group, the pedestrian committee has had Louis Araya and Steve Bridges, Bridget come multiple times. And I don't think you've gotten good answers from them. So, and I don't understand it. It happens on the engineering side, it's not on the planning side. It's the engineering and the enforcement side. The TENO, which is ah, which is Dan Neighbors uh, Bureau, they help uh, contractors and developers put these plans together. Then it goes through um, development services, which is another separate bureau in the transportation division. That's where Louis and Steve Bridget are. And then there are field managers and inspectors and construction supervisors who see that this happens on the ground properly. And I think it's an awkward, disjointed process that doesn't work very well. So I salute Dana's effort to try to put your arms around it to get some answers. And, and I believe the, the suggestion was to have a panel. And, and in line with that, I would suggest everybody be as civil as possible and try to try to solve this. Won't well, happen all at once, but it, let, clarify who does what, who's supposed to do what, where are the legislative mandates or the county ordinances that require this and the other thing, the safety rules. It's it's kind of a jumble. Yeah, I mean, so the question really is, as as a as the groups that we are, the advisory groups, how can how can we join in the, in the process and help it move forward? I don't know that in looking at what Dana has kind of put together, he's kind of writing the process. I'm not sure that that's our role, but but certainly to kind of help with this. The other the other thing that he mentions is a lot of things aren't getting done because there's just a shortage of uh, inspectors and and people that can actually uh, look at the uh, maintenance of traffic uh, if it if it's actually being um, if they're following their maintenance of traffic plans or not and so I don't know as as a group as, as we are if if one of the things we want to do especially when um, it comes to budget items, you know, later in the year is to um, maybe put a letter together um, asking for, um, you know, more, more enforcement, uh, you know, more, more folks that actually can go and, and verify these because um, I think as Dana has said in his letter, there is, um, it's, it's not being enforced in many cases and there are lots of places where, um, Things are, are have have been done that are that that really do affect uh, pedestrians. There's, you often see uh, you know uh, temporary signs for for vehicles are usually put smack dab in the middle of um, you know a a four foot wide um, uh, sidewalk and uh, and and it causes people to have to walk in the street to get. To get around those signs sometimes and for anybody who has limited mobility and and can't get over a curb um they have to back up and turn around so you know they there are a lot of things like that that really uh, make it very difficult um around uh, these uh construction sites well eric speaking freely here i think this the the way you pose that question is is a good one. Um, but 
the bicycle committee and the pedestrian committee are advisory committees. So I think it's I think it's appropriate to say we would like to advise the county that this process needs some help. It's not working well. Um, and over the course of years, we've we've had visitors from TENO. We've had visitors back when Bridget Obakoya used to write MOTs. Uh, Wei Wong has come and talked to the group about MOTs. Dan hasn't yet. Uh, but Steve and, and Louis Araya certainly have. And it's still tough. And Steve and Louis, the thing about the staffing, they both made the point that they aren't don't they don't have enough boots to put boots on the ground to you know keep the contractors and the builders in line. Uh, so I my my first impression was that calling for something like a panel, I don't know if that's exactly the right format, is a good idea. You know, let's get all the pieces on the table and see uh, what can what might be uh, amenable to being fixed. Well, I know, and and maybe this maybe this is going a little too far, uh, but I know when when things kind of went awry with uh, the school boundaries um, at one point in time, uh, they created a, like an ad hoc committee that uh, that. Um, Address that and came up with a series of recommendations, and some of those got implemented for a while. <laughs> but mm -hmm. maybe, maybe something like that is what what would be what what you call a panel would be a you know a temporary committee. Well, it wasn't that wasn't my idea. I'm I'm just parroting right. something I heard. But uh, I can run this up my flagpole and uh, at my my supervisors and see what they think about it. Um, I, other people are aware this is an issue. This isn't just the, the pedestrian and bicycle committees. Um, it's it's not working great. So uh, so let me see what I can do to to raise some awareness in my chain of command about this. Does anybody else want to weigh in on this before we before we move on? I'll, I'll say a couple things and uh, thank you, Eric, for your comments about the Danish draft. I, I agree with a lot of those and I, I already told him that and he said he was going to take those into account. That it's, it is repetitive and it kind of is very directive. You know, the, the county should do this, should, should do that. And I, I think the language needs to be different. I mean, the points are good, but it, the language needs to be different and it does, needs to be condensed and he knows that and he's working on that and I think when he comes back uh, we'll have a better document and meanwhile everyone who hasn't read it yet please read it and do send him comments to make it better. Uh, I think that's about it and yeah I I agree that it would be great to have Dan Neighbors come and he could briefly talk about MLTs too while he's here. My understanding, at least from several of the back meetings, is Vision Zero is kind of taking a lot of this over, which would be, I guess, under Dan technically. And yes. you know, they were they were responsible for putting up the the wrap sections on MOT issues, which I think need a lot of work. Uh, they're very hard. It asks questions you can't answer. It's like, how long has this been a problem? How, how am I supposed to know how long it's been a problem? I'm seeing it today. <laughs> that is not relevant. <laughs> and and it's just weird categorization. And and you know we would love to give them some suggestions on how to improve that to make it easier to use. And again, you know, we 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 all have the same problems with it. We don't know what if there's a problem. We don't know whether it's a problem with the MOT, whether the Construction people aren't following the MOT. We don't know who to contact about the problem. And you know, especially if you have uh, disabilities, it's a it's a huge, huge issue to try to get around. So yes, we need to fix this. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, certainly, as as you mentioned, beyond just the bicycle and pedestrian, we may want to get the disability commission folks maybe. Um, Yep. Make them aware of this as well. Yep. Talk to your wife. 
Yes, okay. <laughs> So anybody else like to to comment on this? Has anybody else actually uh, looked at it? I know it it, it is like a, a three page uh, document with lots of uh, lots of suggestions. Not necessarily specifically on the document, but just on the theme of uh, signs blocking sidewalks. A related one issue I've noticed on Langston Boulevard are those t signs saying sidewalk closed across the street and the construction's been done for, you know, a year or two. Um, so in terms of, you know, an SOP for removing those, which are great that they put them up, um, but they're sort of permanently in like uh, wooden stakes. That's one of Dana's pet peeves, uh, the non removal of signs once the project's done. And I think technically in Virginia, it is illegal to put these construction signs in, on the sidewalk. They have to be off the sidewalk. Even if they're related to driving, it, 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 they can't be blocking the sidewalk. And I try to move them all the time, but they're heavy. Yeah. All right, any, any other comments before we move on to uh, other PAC business, which I guess we can conduct because um, we have, well, I, I don't know if we can conduct it because we don't have the, we don't have proxies for the, uh, for the other two folks. We, we, may... we can't review the minutes, but we can talk about other stuff. Okay. I, we, it, we, we don't have to vote on anything else, but we can That's, discuss it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get to the, the PAC business. It's about 830. Uh, we might even be able to finish a little bit early here, but uh, it's, uh, I guess I'll start out with uh, the big issue, which is officers right now. Um, as as of right now, I am again. I'm sort of the acting chair, um, but we are. I think we are looking actively for uh, somebody who would like to step up and and be a chair of the committee. Um, I I was chair for quite a few years, um, actually with Tom Corns. Um, and I would like to, if, if possible, have, have somebody new, uh, with new with some new ideas uh, take the helm here. I'd, I'd still be happy to act as vice chair, um, but uh, I'm wondering if anybody has, has interest. I won't put people on the spot at the moment, uh, but uh, I will uh, ask that if, if if you have interest, um, please let myself or, or David know. And uh, I will also maybe be calling around to people individually and asking them if, if that's something they would like to do. Uh, but I won't put people on the spot here unless unless somebody really wants to and and uh, would, would would like to to mention it now. Um, otherwise. Yeah, and I, I, I will I will say that you know, I'm, I'm planning on continuing f forever as recording secretary and I am more than happy to support uh, my fellow officers and help them transition. And Eric Malpelli, I hope that you seriously consider this. Uh, you have been coming regularly for since you joined and I have heard you speak at various meetings. You are a wonderful person and it would be Tremendous if you would consider being chair. I know you're very busy and it's hard uh, when you're a working parent, uh, but but you can do it. So I, we hope you will consider it. Oh, thank you. I will uh, definitely consider it and how it can balance with uh, other things I have going on. But thank you for thinking of me. You you don't have to decide right now, uh, but we will discuss this further in November. And and Eric and I and, and David are happy to talk to you about what it's like. It's it's really great. And uh, you know, I I was chair for a few years, and I, I don't need to be chair anymore. Uh, but I want to be very involved. The it is an opportunity to push your agenda. And I did that a lot when I was chair. Uh, there were a lot of things going on in my neighborhood and I could make sure that the PAC weighed in on them. Uh, so so it's great. And you know, we're a great committee. We're, we're easy to work with. And sometimes you have to focus you know, a few hours on things, but most of the time it's relatively pain free. <laughs> and it's fun. So please consider it. Will do. Thank you. Thank you.
And Pam, I just want to say thanks for you for all that that you do uh, in in terms of keeping us on track and and aware of of uh, all these things that are that are going on. Um, I think uh, you you uh, spend a lot of your your personal time uh, really uh, keeping us up to date on on various events and and. Uh, issues for us to weigh in on so thank you very much you're welcome it's my pleasure and thank you for all that you do eric and you too david and uh, we all do it together and you know i i do a lot of this stuff for my own information so i just pass it on <laughs> it's important that we follow all this stuff thank you with with that uh, let's uh, i guess uh talk about well um as far as uh, um liaisons to the uh to this uh, committee, we should really kind of go around and determine right now what are all the active liaisons. So, uh, David and I were talking about that, and one of the questions we asked was was the the one the and I can't even remember it's the one for transportation alternatives uh, with the schools. Uh, the I'm trying to remember what the four I'll, letter uh, I'll, acronym. I'll bring it was. up here. If if I can take the screen again, I'll bring up the cheat sheet. And I think okay. it might be a good idea to send this around to the members and make sure we're up to date. Okay, I believe that that uh, that uh, committee though it, it no longer exists. Sadly, <laughs> I think I think you're right. I, that there was were... the ACTC, wasn't it? Is the one right. that's gone. And the yes. JCTC. So it was the Advisory yes. Committee on Transportation Transportation Choices. Alternative or Transportation yeah, choices, choices. Choices. Yeah. And I think right. the one that still exists in some form is called the Joint Committee on Transportation Choices. And that's between staff. transportation and schools. That's staff. But let's let's look at the chart together and people can tell me if uh well I'm pretty sure it's not 100 percent correct because nothing ever is. But uh, we'll start the process of reviewing it so we can get it up to date. So I'm going to take the screen and put this up forward. This has been recently updated to show Eric as chair. Acting Vice chair. Chairs. I can put that in. How about if you if you if you insist, I can do that. Look, this is this is like live ammunition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that Patrick Kenny is the designated liaison to the ACTC, but I think the committee is defunct. Right, sadly, because I I, I right. actually attended that for a while. I thought it was very good, um, but I think that I think that transportation um, priorities in in uh, the um, uh, Arlington Public Schools has has really dropped off. There, there's there's one one person, kind of one individual who is wearing many hats, who's right. who's trying to take it all on, and 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 that's unfortunate. Right. It's so something that I've brought up in my working environment is the need for us in county transportation to become clearer about what's going on with schools transportation. The fellow you mentioned, Kevin Treacle, I've met with him a few times. Uh, you're right, he wears a lot of different hats, uh, but there's not currently a safer to school person dedicated. And it, it's just one of those things that's kind of eroded a bit over the last few years. I'm sure, I'm sure pandemic had something to do with it. The schools were super stressed out during the pandemic, uh, but it's time to get back on that. Right. So I think this membership list is current. Um, uh, and uh, we should it's it's this it's this column that we want to make sure that we're we're handling correctly, that we've got everybody's other uh, representations correct, that we plug any holes that are that are there that we might want to fill. And so uh, we, we okay. I'll send this around. I think it's too much to try to do right now, but I'll send right. it around. Right. Okay. Okay. That the, sounds good, the, and we'll try and each update it. 
Yeah, the the urgent problem we may not be able to solve it tonight is that with Elizabeth dropping out as chair and her other responsibilities, we do not have a representative on the neighborhood complete streets commission, mm -hmm. and that's a really important commission, and that is something that we really want a representative on. And <laughs> I don't know if Tom or Eric want to add that to the responsibilities, but. Uh, we may have to have a further discussion on that. I, it, I it may uh, temporarily uh, see if we can <laughs> if I can attend some of their meetings until we do um, till we do get somebody. Yeah, because you're used to do that, right, Eric? I did. I did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In fact, you were you were critical in in actually making it all happen. Think, right. Right. Time. Right. right, and uh, I, I guess I had attended for a while, but I I I. I decided to step back to allow uh, you know others to uh, to take on some other roles but as I said on a temporary yeah. basis I, I don't mind doing that okay okay I, I so think okay Jim, we'll, has, we'll, Jim Feaster has left Ashton Heights isn't hasn't he moved I believe Jim Feaster uh, well let's lives in, let's pass I have no idea. Yet. <laughs> I won't I do have that no yet. Idea. Right. Let's yeah, pass he, these around to all, all yes. members and, and so you can get feedback and we'll we'll get it up to date. Yes. Yep. We'll okay. do. Yep. Very so good. So screen. So with that, I think we wanted to also talk about SPRC. Um, and uh, Pam, maybe I know you have the best handle on this. Are there some critical ones that, that we need volunteers for uh, for yeah, I, site plan review committee yeah. items? I want, to, I want to talk about it in general and about how important it is. And David, if you can bring up the link to the site yes. plan page. And Which I have in, in my email to you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about yeah. six windows deep right now. I just have to find it. We're pretty desktop. far down there. Yes, we're almost done. Uh, as I have said many times before, uh, the SPRCs, which is the Site Plan Review Committee, uh, this is the com a committee of the Planning Commission. Uh, it has members of the Planning Commission, Transportation Commission, C2E2, Housing, uh, Economic Development, uh, the PAC, we get to sit on it, Civic Associations, uh, CPHD and DES staff, and the applicants and attorneys. So it's a big bunch of people that come to each SPRC meeting. They, this is the way that individual private developments are reviewed and approved by the county. It is a critical step in the process. And we go over the nitty gritty over the actual design of the building, the design of the roads, design of the garage, everything you can think about. It is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> And uh, I'm amazed that the PAC has been a member of this. We've been a part of this for a very long time. We had one member, uh, Ellen Almsbrugger, that um, Armsbrister, the only thing, this is what she did. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I butchered her name. Uh, she did a wonderful job. And, and we Tom, were. I and believe Tom Corns did, uh, has, has attended some as well. Right, right. And so it a, became. I was a member of the. Uh, I was a member of the SPRC itself. You, yeah, you were. Uh, you were a, a a kind of a a freelance person there. You and several other people. Yeah. Pam, I'm not finding the, your your message to oh. me didn't have that. It had other things, but did not have the SPRC link. Uh, oh well, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh I've got a, I've got notes. They each developmental project has its own SPRC roster, and we are on that roster as a participant. That roster is approved by the Planning Commission before the first SPRC meeting, which is a problem. Uh, currently. After Lizzie resigned, uh, we talked to Matt Pfeiffer, who runs the SPRCs, and got Eric and I listed as the default people. And so we are expected, one of us is expected to attend. 
unless there's someone else on the SPRC who wants to attend. And we can make that decision uh, up to the day before the first meeting. So the, the problem with the SPRC is that they are, they are either all on Monday or on Thursday, but you don't know in advance what day they're going to be meeting. <laughs> And some people have problems with those dates, so they really can't commit to one or the other. So we try to keep people, give, have some flexibility. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, some sometimes you can attend virtually, but uh, but they prefer, uh, I guess, to have uh, individuals they, attend the the actual uh, the actual meetings, right? Yeah. They the SPRC has to have a quorum and if we can help them achieve a quorum by actually attending that's great uh if we can't attend and that is usually fine you just have to tell the chair and the staff person uh in general why you can't attend and let them know ahead of time and then you can attend virtually or if you can't attend at all um hopefully you there will be a backup from the pack who can attend in your place Oh, OK, there's usually only two meetings, so that's good. Uh, and they're all going to be on a Monday or a Thursday and uh, usually about a month apart. And they are really, really important because this is how we get better pedestrian infrastructure at developments. And a lot of Roslyn and, and Boston and the areas where we live are full of these developments. And I, I don't really understand why the county does it this way, but this is how we get sidewalks and landscaping zones and, and cafe zones and crosswalks and intersections and pedestrian lights and street lights. All of this, they they are done through the SPRC process and the approval of the event and the, the development either builds it or pays for it. Um, we also improve pedestrian access into, from, and through the site of the building and the land. And that's really important, especially for some of these mega blocks, if, to really think about how, how pedestrians move through it and should be moving through it and what needs to be corrected and how the development, developers' plans need to be changed to fix that. Uh, we monitor ADA accessibility through the site. There's a lot of pedestrian issues with that. Uh, we can collaborate and give comments on other transportation issues, bus stops, parking, on the street, garage, Pudo. Pudo is a huge issue these days. And you all know this pick up and drop off. It was not an issue before COVID, but it is a huge issue now. And a lot of the developments don't have those in their plans and they've got to figure out how you're going to do it ahead of time. So you mean uh, cur curb space? <laughs> curb space. You need curb space specifically for Pudo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But and but still allowing bus stops and 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 bike lanes and other travel to come by. Uh, also check on bike facilities and loading docks, uh, the construction issues. Uh, what is the hall route? How are they going to bring supplies? Uh, where are they going to su su uh, store all the supplies? And where are the construction workers going to park? These are all issues that need to be addressed. And you learn all about. Uh, the development of these projects and I certainly knew nothing about this until I started doing this and you work with a great bunch of people and volunteers so it's a great thing to do and I have a couple brief comments on what the uh, what you do as a PAC person on on SPRC you are the watchdog for pedestrian space in general and that's really important the most important thing that Ellen taught us was walk the current site pay attention to the existing sidewalks and intersection conditions, bus stops, pedestrian flow through the site and how it might change and what needs to change and take notes. And a lot of the projects have uh, pre SPRC uh, tours and, uh, and an online engagement. And I recommend that if you're going to be participating in the SPRC that you try to do those. Uh, the, an, uh, an in-person tour is wonderful to actually see how the site works and going through the pre-SPRC public engagement online is also helpful. Uh, you should read the materials, uh, especially there's a staff report, a staff presentation, an applicant presentation before the meeting. Uh, you can get into the plans and things if you want to. That starts getting really technical and you don't really have to do that. And when you go to an SPRC meeting, SPRC 
uh, participate, whether you're doing it personally or virtually. Give your comments. That's why you're there. Uh, and you can comment on anything. You focus on pedestrian issues, but then I comment on everything. It's like, oh, that's a really ugly building. Uh, and come back and report. To you. There are some really ugly buildings. And report so back Pam, on your experience. Yeah. What? So, Pam, you. Uh, I just want to clarify again. You said that for every project, typically, there are just two meetings. There's like a preliminary meeting and a final meeting. Is that is that yeah, the well, case? There, there, there's two meetings, and to some extent, the first meeting is preliminary, but they cover different topics. Usually, the first one is kind of a review of the general plan and to focusing on architecture and a couple other issues. And then transportation is usually on the second meeting. So that's usually more important, but pedestrian issues come up at both meetings. So, okay. so it can be, it's really important to do both. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, give us a report on, on what you learned and what's going on and we can give you some feedback. And any questions that I, I next want to talk about the upcoming SPRC meetings that will be coming up soon and there's one of them uh, on the 19th, unfortunately, the same day as the Vision Zero meeting uh, that really somebody should go to. This is the Red Lion Inn. It's 1501 Arlington Boulevard. Uh, this is the second SPRC. It will include transportation. It is a 423 unit apartment building that's going to replace the Red Lion Inn. Uh, so, Eric, you're going to go to the Vision Zero meeting? Yes, I will. OK. Uh, either Tom or Eric Malpelli, do you have any desire to go to this meeting? An ability to go? Or a need ask. This is uh, October 19th, so it's next Thursday. Not not tomorrow, but next Thursday. Yeah, I've got another meeting. OK, you're out. Uh, Eric, do you have any desire to go? Uh, I've got a civic association. Uh, that, that, that's more important. OK, I will go. OK, <laughs> uh, I'll read up on it. I'll let you know. So there's two others that are coming up that I want to mention. Uh, dates have not been set. The first, they're both really interesting and different. Uh, one of the cool things about SPRCs are some of these projects are just Oh, it's not just a regular office building or apartment building. It's something really different. You know, there's uh, Andrea was the person for the Sunrise uh, Senior Facility, which is uh, complicated uh, elder care. And the first one that's coming up is the Goodwill site, which you're probably all familiar with. Uh, it's 10 South Gleef Street at Arlington Boulevard, so it's right at it's at a horrible intersection. Right. Miserable space, terrible conjunction, construction and everything. Uh, I they're going to be replacing the current site. They will keep or they will rebuild uh, a new facility. It will include a store and a drop off place for stuff. And it's also going to have uh, child care and affordable apartments. This is great. But they're taking up most of the space that's there with these buildings. And it's already such a horribly, it's a horrible transportation mess. And uh, it's it's going to be really important for for one of us to be there and, and you know, protect the pedestrian uh, flow around there. It's right so, across from a school too. Yeah, yeah, it's a. It's going to be a really interesting project. Uh, we don't know what the dates are, but uh, if anyone might be interested in that. Uh, and again, it's it hasn't started yet. Uh, oh, oh, public engagement for that is starting next week. Uh, I will I will post the links to all of these uh, in in on our Google group. Uh, the final one, uh, which just went up and again is a very unusual one. It says it's semi de detached dwellings. I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, it sounds fairly small and they haven't set dates for anything, but that, that could be a really unusual and fairly quick it's, project for somebody. And it's 1129 South 
North Utah. Is that like a duplex potentially? I have no idea. Maybe. <laughs> they there. I think they might have some basic plans up there, but I have no idea what it is. What, what did you say the address is? Uh, eleven twenty nine North Utah. Hmm. Is that close to you? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure it's close to anybody. It, it certainly isn't close to me. And I've got a whole bunch of ones coming up. Uh, River House has just started. Uh, I am the backup. Uh, John Armstrong is the primary person for the YMCA site, which is on hold at the moment. And then there's like three huge projects coming up in my neighborhood uh, that are uh, in process. Uh, there is, there are active plans for the Inn of Roslyn, but it seems to be on hold. Uh, 1601 Fairfax, the SPRC has not started for that. And does anyone know anything about the NSTA site, 1840 Wilson Boulevard? That will be coming up at some point too. Well, Pam, why don't you post those? I will, yeah. I will. Hopefully. Well, and I, I want to give David a, a, a few minutes because he yes. wanted to talk about some, yep. some things at the end here, uh, some material so. to share. So um, yep. I will That's let it. David. Sorry, like I, I apologize. No, but no, no. No, 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 no worries. It's, it's super easy. Uh, it's just housekeeping. Uh, I'm going to take the screen one more time. Um, and and this is all about Pam as well, because what we're doing is finally getting around to posting things on the PAC website that uh, that I've been behind on. So here's the Pedestrian Advisory Committee website. Here's the charter. Here's the membership. Here's uh, the agenda for this meeting that we're having right now. Here's the announcement for this meeting. But then all the action is down here. And I had to learn from scratch how to use this web platform that the county now uses. I was I was good on the previous one, but they changed to a new platform altogether, mostly for readability and uh, behind the scenes ease of use for use for people who do this a lot. And I go to the website a couple of times a month, usually after the meetings and before the meetings. So what we have now are um, better record keeping. And what I've done just to keep uh, from getting overwhelmed, so I've gone back to the, to the beginning of 2020 and made a nice new compact way of recording our meetings. So the minutes, the agenda, video if there is one, and other. And unfortunately, in the county's transition to this new uh, web platform, quite a lot of the quite a number of the links got lost. So if you click on something that says other, it might be a link to uh, the Arlington Public Schools extended walk zone. And maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. That one seems to work. So yay. But they don't all work. So there's, there's some cleanup to do, and maybe when uh, Pamela gets through with this year's uh, Marine Corps Marathon, we can identify the ones that need some, some relinking. But anyway, the aim has been to get caught up and to stay caught up, and I feel pretty good about it. And, and in terms of usability and ease of, ease of use, um, we're going to offload the older sort of archival material to a secondary site like it's like having an attic so so that the the main site will uh, load more quickly and be more uh, user so, friendly so will there just be a link to there will uh, be a, a secondary site that's perfect yes. yeah, it's like having a second it's like having a second page uh, right. i was just explained it was explained to me today because I was a little, a little leery. I said, well, we don't want to lose that because it's all those old letters and all the old testimony, old minutes, agendas. But the site was getting bogged down. So we're going to, it's like having mini stories. We're just going to have a, 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 an annex that will be prominently linked on the homepage. And, th and that's it. It's going to be, it's going to be great. And then uh, I, I can stay caught up now. I got way behind, but uh, we're, we're caught up and I can stay caught up. That's it.
All right. Well, thank you. We're just a minute, a uh, couple minutes before uh, nine, and I guess there were. Um, we're not going to be able to do the 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 minutes this approve the minutes this time, so right. we will we'll right. approve them both next time. Thank you. Next time. And then on the at the bottom of our agenda, there were just some future things, uh, maybe to have another meeting if we can with VDOT on Route One and get some updates on that. And and and, and I have just a word to say about that is that I talked with my supervisors yesterday about that, and VDOT's not ready yet. So okay. uh, we, we, will, we will be made aware when they're ready and uh, they'll be happy to come and talk with us. OK, and you had mentioned Dan Neighbors. We said either Christine Baker or Dan right. Neighbors. So it, it we'll be able to maybe give some updates on Vision Zero next time. Yes, and, and uh, I'm going to reach out to Dan and ask if he can come in November, if that's all right with you, because that's just four weeks from great. now. Okay. okay, and then a future uh, maybe to have Mr. Treacle uh, with uh, the Arlington Public Schools come and join us. So yes, that. and um, so here's my thoughts on that, is I would like to have my colleagues and, and me uh, have a preliminary discussion. We don't put anybody on the spot. So yes. um, it se seems to me there's a lot of lack of understanding about how all the pieces are supposed to fit together. Um, so I think between staff of county and staff of schools, we should have that conversation first and then see if we have something to report out. Thank you. And at, we're just ending here at nine. Yeah. Before we go, does anybody have any announcements? Anything they would like to add? Um, yeah, uh, just on, on VDOT, uh, my, my sense is the same as what uh, David was told that uh, VDOT is still pondering things. Uh, although I had a comment, uh, we, we sent this long letter to the county manager uh, about our thoughts on the current Route 1. We never heard back. And uh -huh. if you could follow up on that, David, and also did the county submit any comments? The last time we got a nice note from the county manager saying thank you and, and they appreciate our thoughts. And they he forwarded a copy of what they sent. Oh, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to send myself another note. And... Uh, <laughs> and add that to the list. And I, I guess the only thing in the chat is your links. If you can send those links to me. And yes. I, I guess I don't really need to know who logged on. We know who logged in. <laughs> There's not very many people. Right. <laughs> that we did our essential business. Thank you all very much. And yes. uh, David, there were a few minor errors and issues with the, the minutes that we didn't approve. So I will send those corrections to you. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if I should correct my version or if I should just tell you, since you've already posted it, if I should tell you what they are. I believe I posted them as draft. So this is this is part of my discipline is I try to post things as draft before they're final and then post them as final. Okay. <laughs> so or should I correct my version and you can Sure. Correct? Then okay. it'll be then it'll All be right. re revised draft, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you, you can you. end right the in. recording and we don't yep. have to rush off, but okay. why don't you end oh, the recording? Can yep. I can do at that. This point. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you all. Stop. Uh, 901. Good. Excellent meeting running, Eric. <laughs>